Hey, 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 what's up, the people? Welcome back. Holy crap, that light's a little too bright, I think. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, hopefully today we're going to have a pretty uh, straightforward repair here. If uh, the video title wasn't obvious enough, we're going to be taking a look at this uh, climate control module out of a 1990 Lexus LS400. Uh, and uh, the problem with it is that the LCD here is uh, pretty much completely turned black. You can kind of see some of the original color right there on that corner. So uh, this actually belongs to a, a friend of mine who uh, recently got that vehicle. And he asked me if I could replace the LCD. And he actually already purchased the replacement, which is this unit right here. So uh, hopefully there's no shenanigans going on where this is not going to fit this. So like I said, hopefully this is going to be pretty straightforward. And uh, if you're kind of looking to do something similar yourself, he bought this on eBay. He said he paid about $35 for it. And apparently the company that sells it is uh, Tannen Electronics. Uh, in the back here, we got some more information about it. So let's look that up. Now, funny thing is that I did look this up. And sure enough, on uh, eBay, you find it for $35. And I had actually done a search on Google just to see if, you know, like what, what came up for this. And you actually do get a website also. Went to the website. But they sell it for almost triple the price on the website. It's like 99 bucks. So why that huge discrepancy? I'm not entirely sure. Hello, I like money. You're better off getting it on eBay, I guess. So yeah, not much to say here, except uh, let's go ahead and get right to it. Now there are two screws that I see here, like one on this side, one on that side that probably allows this bezel here to come off. So I'll just go ahead and remove those. Okay, so there's these tabs up on the top. I'm going to try to pull those up while I pry forward. I don't know. There's some screws here holding these boards. I don't know if those need to come off or not. Like if, if when I pull this out, they're going to slide off. So I'm just going to remove those. I've never taken one of these apart. Okay. So let's see if this pops out now. I'm going to do a little bit further in so I don't accidentally knock it off the bench. Okay, that's separating there. And there's some on the bottom too, so we'll have to lift those up. Right forward while we're at it. Okay, there it goes. Okay, it doesn't seem to be pulling the other boards with it, so... Oh, I see. Okay, so there's cables that interconnect the, the boards. Okay, now unfortunately, it's not the connectors on this board that come off. It's going to be the ones on the inside. And there's this sort of a baffle here that separates the two sections this looks like it should come out ah uh, yes so it's got these little tabs and you can see some right here that kind of holds it in place but now that i've taken those off this should hopefully just kind of pivot out there we go and that gives me access to pull those connectors out so looks like i didn't need to remove those screws from the boards after all this is really the only thing we need to deal with here. I could probably put those screws back on, although maybe I'll pull this board out. Um, if I can figure out which uh, of the pins on the connectors back here are like the ground and the 12 volt and maybe an accessory, hopefully I can power it here on the bench so we can test it out. For now, this sets aside. We're not going to need that. Now here, what do we have? So it looks like maybe we'll need to remove a few of these screws to remove this board. It looks like there's a total of three different boards on here. We've got this board, and I have a feeling that maybe that is the LCD interface. But none of that's going to be removable unless we can take this off. So let's get a, a number one Phillips in here, and we'll remove all these uh, screws that are on this board. And these are some pretty long screws from what it feels like here. Like It only unthreads a little bit, but the screw itself is pretty long. So there's a total of nine of these long black ones. There's also these more sort of like gold colored ones that looks like they are just screwed into the plastic for the reflector on the back of the LCD. Okay, maybe we will have to separate this backboard by removing those two golden screws there and see where that gets us because this doesn't feel like it wants to have any movement outwards. Okay, so now this blackboard is a separating. I'll just pull all these black screws out here so they don't interfere with anything. Here comes the board. Here comes the board. 
All right, so this board here is pretty much uh, just some buttons. There's an LED, uh, that's not an LED, that's uh, a little bulb right there. You got some other bulbs. So this is all uh, backlighting for the buttons and stuff. Nothing to do there. We'll set that aside. Two more of those golden looking screws there. So let's take those off. So it looks like this blackboard here is gonna come out first. Yeah, oh, okay, we can disconnect this from here. Okay, that frees this board. And that has uh, LEDs for the uh, buttons there. It's got the, the time buttons. And okay, so that leaves this thing here, which is the, the backlight assembly and the LCD itself. And it does not want to release. Oh, I see. It looks like it's somehow like adhered to that plastic protective uh, lens up there in the front. You know, just push on this and get it to come out. I don't want to bend it either. Like it's it's still pulling it out and it's it's you can see it's flexing a bit. I don't want to like crease it. So maybe I'll just kind of work my finger around push that to separate it from the plastic bezel there there it goes okay so those are I thought maybe they would be like two uh oh one of the buttons fell out in the foam so I thought this was going to stay inside of that but it does not yeah so it's double-sided taped right here well it doesn't look like that matters because we have access to the pins of the LCD on this side. And once all those are um, undone, looks like maybe the LCD will just, uh, will be able to just uh, like slide it out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here to remove the LCD, the pins, is I'm gonna use this uh, pick here where I've kind of made a small hook on it. And I'm gonna heat each pin with a soldering iron and I'm gonna use this pick to just like pull up on it to separate it from the board start with this side here so you guys can get a good view of that okay that's one and that's two okay so that's going pretty well i'm going to go ahead and finish them all off and then we'll come back the entire process went really smoothly and sure enough once that last pin is out that lcd is free to slide out so just comes out just like that you can see how it's uh, really dark right there in the area where all the disp display elements are <laughs> so okay now i'm going to go ahead and clean all this uh, old solder here off and for that i'm just going to use a uh, uh, solder uh, wick no i don't think i really need it for this but i'm going to put some flux here just to kind of facilitate the process although there's going to be a lot of solder here so i'm going to be using a lot of this uh, wick All right, that's going to be good enough for that. Now I am going to clean off all this uh, flux with a swab. I'm going to try to get up as much as I can just with the dry swab at first, and then I'm going to hit it with some IPA to try to clean up the rest of it. All right, that's good. That looks uh, pretty clean. Okay, here is the replacement display. I'm going to uh, try to be careful not to touch like the, the surface there. I'm going to just try to handle it from the sides so I don't leave like any uh, fingerprints or smudges on it. And um, yeah, the pins on this are shaped or they're formed so that they match the, the originals. All right, now I'm going to carefully try to slide this back in there without touching the front or the back. There it goes. And it needs a little alignment there. It can slide side to side and i'm going to try to make sure that i get all of the pins so that they're sitting kind of like uh, kind of right in the center of each one of those uh, pads on the board and i'm going to start by first of all i'm going to make sure that this is sitting completely flat there it is okay so i'm going to start by tacking the two sides or the two ends and then i'll just uh, work my way you know like across like either direction Get my spool of solder over here. 
Go ahead and tack this one here first. All right, now that's not going to slide anymore. Tack the opposite side. Good. All right, so I'll just go ahead and solder the rest here, and then we'll come back. All right, that's all of them uh, soldered down. Uh, I do have a solder bridge right there that I'm going to need to take care of. But uh, one thing that uh, kind of happens is uh, some of these pins were not sitting like completely uh, flat on the uh, solder pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back uh, th to all of them uh, other than the end ones here. I'm just going to kind of like gently push down a little bit on it with this pick while I melt the solder. Let it harden again and then just release it so that way that pin can uh, not be like kind of floating in between the 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 solder and the pad get a little bit more of a flush fit there so yeah i'll just uh do that to all of these and then it should be good all right hitting the last three here and then we'll be done with this process and i've made sure to remove the solder bridges that we had over on that side i'm just going to uh, double check it make sure that there are no bridges that i missed but it doesn't look like it. Okay, just gonna give it a quick little wipe down here with some IPA just to remove some of that extra flux. Not that it would really harm anything, but just so it looks clean. All right, <laughs> major improvement. Okay, now these buttons look like they can just kind of go in any uh, position here. So I'm just gonna drop it in there. There it goes this foam piece back in there, even though I don't think it's going to stay. Well, if I drop it in like straight down like that, it should be fine. All right, let's go ahead and reassemble this at least uh, somewhat. Put that in there like that so we can uh, test it out. I mean, I guess I could put it all back together to test it out. It's really not that difficult to take apart. And this is the one that had the two golden screws on those uh, in those positions there. All right, let's reconnect this part and then place this board back on. So the buttons here are all operational that they're not, they don't feel like they're stuck or anything. Okay, no, everything feels pretty good. All right, so I've got all the screws uh, put back in place, made sure that they are bottomed out and then just a tiny little bit of a, of a torque there to wanna strip the plastic, but uh, everything feels pretty good. All the buttons are, they feel pretty responsive. And uh, these are clicky. The screen uh, looks a million times better. So let's uh, let's see what we can find about how this uh, wires up. Maybe we can test it out. Sometimes the functionality of each pin will be labeled on the board. So that's gonna be my first uh, check here. But no, nope, everything says that. Uh, TP, everything's a test point. Okay, so change of plans. I couldn't readily find um, a wiring diagram online, and my friend doesn't have a service manual for that car to look up a wiring diagram for, so I figured out it's easy enough to take apart. I'll just I'll put it back together, and then I'll just get a shot of uh, testing it in the car, and whether it works or not, if I have to bring it back to the bench. I have a feeling it's going to work. I mean, this is such a simple swap that... I can't imagine that this video is going to take much longer, but I've been wrong before. So we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm just going to slide these boards back in here, starting with the bottom board because that one's the longest. And I'm trying not to damage that ribbon that's in between them. So this should just slide in like that. That top one's a little tighter than the bottom one. And I'll just put the screws in the back. All right, so I just need to hook up all these cables and they're all different sizes. So they could pretty much only go in like one place. Okay, I just got to put this uh, baffle back in place and I can only go in one direction pretty much. The notched side is where this board here is going to sit. So. And then it's kind of cupped on this side. 
the other side's just flat, so it just uh, it's gonna go in like that. Make sure I get these the tabs into those slots like that. Make sure the bottom ones go into their slots. Okay, that's all in place. I just gotta make sure these cables kind of stay in the middle there. Not that it's a, doesn't look like it's uh, too critical. All right, should just be able to slide back on. I feel like something stuff. Oh, make sure that this fits inside. <laughs> there we go. And there it goes. Now just these two side screws. We're all done. Let's go test it out. We ended up testing the climate control unit in the vehicle. And while I'm happy to say that there are no problems with the LCD like whatsoever, everything seems to show up just fine. Unfortunately, the backlights uh, bulbs are a slightly different issue as like, it looks like none of them work. And um, I guess I could have, what I could have done is I could have taken out the bulbs from the board and like tested them here like manually on the, on the bench and seeing if like the filaments were any good. But my friend said like, whatever, he's not too concerned about that part. He's just send it. <laughs> so, uh, but one of them looks like it does uh, sort of work sometimes in like the right conditions. Uh, it, we were driving in the car when he mentioned it, that one of them sometimes turns on. So I like knocked on the LCD portion and like one of them came on. So you can kind of see it working in this other little clip here. So, well, until we get around to maybe messing with those and replacing them or whatever, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that maybe some of this information, somebody could find it useful. And uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys around the bench.